honor for us to have this uh, family, the Elites family. As I said, as I've said, uh, they've been in Bulgaria for many years uh, doing this ministry, and uh, it's a great honor and privilege for all of us here in Philam to be a part of this ministry. Amen. Amen. And uh, we may not be able to go to Bulgaria, but our prayers and support for them will be a great help. You know. And uh, uh, just keep them in your prayer. And without further ado, uh, let me welcome, uh, let us welcome uh, uh, Brother Larry. Amen. Amen. Well, it is a joy to be in the Lord's house this morning. I uh, enjoy being around God's people. We're being around a place where we lift up the Son of God in His name. Talk all about what great things He's done. I've been in them places where people talk about what they've done, and that's a depressing subject. When you start talking about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you, now that's the subject we're talking about. And I appreciate a place uh, such as I'm in this morning where the Son of God's lifted up. He's magnified, glorified, worshipped, and praised. And his holy name is blessed, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the song that was sung. And I sat, as I sat there, I was thinking about that scripture. It came to my mind where it says, uh, He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Amen. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. She was singing about uh, how God let the only worthy one, I mean, let him go on. And yeah. talking all about that. And he truly and sincerely was the only worthy one. Amen. He was the only one that could do the job that he'd done. I mean, he went to a place that we couldn't go. He did up at that place, which is called Calvary. It's the place he went to an old rugged cross. he done on that cross a work that none of us could have done. He was the only worthy one. He's the only one that could have done it. As they said over there in the book of Hebrews, talks about them priests and talks about all them uh, offerings that they offered up and things like that, but it never took away sin. Wasn't possible. But the Bible said, but this man, yeah. after he'd offered up himself yeah. a sacrifice for sins once and for all, yeah. he sat down at the right hand yeah. of the Father. Amen. He was the only worthy one, and his name's the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is the Son of God. Amen. The Bible says that the Word was made flesh and came and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, yeah. the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of yeah. grace and truth. Yeah. As it was being sung, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever Amen. believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever will may come. Amen. And I'm glad about that this morning. And I'm glad that he's Lamb enough for the whole entire world. Amen. John the Baptist introduced him as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. I mean, that's a great big job to take away the sins of the whole entire world. From the garden, uh, from Adam, from the garden of Eden to the last man draws breath. I mean, and in between every single sin, for him to take the weight of those sins on his shoulders, Amen. on his back, and be made that sin, that's a big job Amen. that only God Amen. himself could take care of. Amen. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad that he took those sins in his body on the tree. And the Bible said that when he cried at his finish, he bowed his head, he died. The Bible said they took him down, they laid him in a sepulcher, a borrowed sepulcher. It wasn't even his own, a borrowed sepulcher. They laid him there. The Bible said he's descended down to the lower parts of the earth. That's hell. He went to hell for you and I. He spent three days Amen. and three nights there. Amen. When the Bible said that death couldn't hold him, hell couldn't hold him. Amen. And he resurrected victorious over death, Amen. hell, and the grave. He said, I have power to lay down my life. He said, I have power to take it again. He said, this commandment have I received of my Father. Amen. And then he ascended on high. <laughs> he seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And the Bible says this. It says, he ever liveth. Amen. He died once, and once and for all, it was enough. Amen. Now he ever liveth, Amen. never to die again, he Amen. ever liveth to make intercession Amen. for you and I. And I'm glad about it this morning. I'm glad that's where he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. If you have a Bible this morning, you'll turn to the book of Isaiah in chapter number 1. Like I say, it is a joy for me to be here this morning, to be able to preach. It may be my last time preaching here for a while. We'll see what the Lord does, but... I mean, uh, we're getting ready to go back, so you pray for us. Uh, it's been a joy to meet y'all. It's been a blessing to cross paths. And uh, one of these days, 
You're saved, washed in the blood. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to the same heaven I'm going to. And we get to spend eternity together. We'll never have to say goodbye. There's no more parting over there. But we have a few more things to do here on this earth. A few more jobs to do for the Lord. But one of these days we'll get to sit around at the table, break bread together, and sing praises to the Lamb of God who done did it all for us. But until then, we got work to do. And this morning I'd like to preach just a little bit to you this morning. From the book of Isaiah, and we'll begin in verse, uh, that's chapter number 1, begin in verse 18. Uh, I want to preach a little bit on one word this morning, and that one little word is the word come. Come. It's defined in uh, Webster's uh, 1828 as to move towards, to advance nearer, to draw nigh, to approach, to arrive, to be present, to advance or move into view, to appear. That word come, that English word come. Isaiah uh, chapter number 1, we'll begin reading in verse 18, if you'll stand with me, I'll try to read verses 18, 19, and 20, and then we'll try to preach a little bit from the Word of God, you pray for me, this is the book of Isaiah chapter number 1, beginning in verse number 18, the Word of God says here, it said, come now, come now, not later, but come now, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Now this is the Lord speaking here. This isn't me speaking. This isn't anybody else in this congregation. This isn't anybody else at all speaking here. It's the Lord. And He said, Come now. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Although your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Although they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Thank you. You may be seated. This is the Lord speaking here to, through his prophet Isaiah here. And like I've already pointed out, he said, come now. Amen. Now is the accepted time. Now is the time to come. Not later. The Bible said uh, uh, over there in the uh, book of uh, Hebrews, I believe it is. It says it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is your time of salvation. Now is the time. It's not late. You're not guaranteed your next breath. You're not guaranteed right. tomorrow. You're not guaranteed next week. You're not guaranteed anything. As a matter of fact, I mean, uh, you're just blessed to be sitting here this morning, breathing the air that God's given you, your heart beating in your chest, and I mean, just in your right mind, you're blessed this morning. And the Lord said, come now and let us reason together. I mean, He is a reasonable God. He's not an unreasonable God. He's a very reasonable God. He said over there in the book of uh, uh, Romans in chapter number 12, He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. He's not an unreasonable God. He's a very reasonable God. As a matter of fact, He's so reasonable that He created man in His own image, breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, he became a living soul, set him up in a perfect garden. Man fell, sinned against God, disobeyed God, and then God turned right around and came down to this earth in the form of a man, the Lord Jesus Christ, and went all the way to the cross to redeem fallen man. That's a reasonable God. Amen. That's not at all unreasonable. Amen. He's a very reasonable God. As a matter of fact, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. He said, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. So this reasonable God wants you this morning to come to Him. He wants you to come right where He's at. He's very approachable this morning. He wants you to come. He's given an invitation and He says right here, though your sins be as scarlet. That's the way you are this morning. If you're lost and in your sin and undone without the Lord Jesus Christ, you are yet in your sin and you're headed toward a devil's hell. That's where you're going. The Bible said that there is none good, no, not one. It said all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The Bible said that we came forth from our mother's womb speaking lies. We're void, we're empty, we're vain. Without God we have absolutely, positively nothing. And the very best we can do is sin and die in our sin and go to hell. That's the best we can do. And the Lord said, come to me this morning. I want to talk it over with you. Like the songwriter said. And he said, just have a little talk with Jesus. I mean, the Bible said, here, come and come to me. Let us reason this thing out. Let's talk about this thing. Let's have a discussion about this thing. And I want you to know that your sins are as scarlet. I want to wash you as white as snow. 
You're in your sin this morning. You're lost and undone without the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible's saying here, you don't have to stay in that condition. Amen. You don't have to stay in that condition. You can get out of that condition. He said, hey, I came and died for you and I prepared the way. I made it possible for you to be as white as snow if you'd like to come. And it's up to you to come. The Bible said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I mean, if any man hear my voice. And let me in. He'll come in and sup with you. He'll save your soul. Right. The Bible said here, though they be, your sins be as a scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red Amen. like crimson, Amen. they shall be as wool. Amen. White as the wool of the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. He wants you to be as white as snow this Amen. morning. But it's up to you. He said, come now and let us reason together. He said, I want you to come for cleansing. He said, hey, I want to help you this morning if you'll but come to me. I want to help you this morning. I want to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. I want to do something for you this morning that your mom and dad can't do for you, that your friends can't do for you. I want to do something for you that no one else can do. Why? Because I love you. I want to do something for you this morning and that saved your soul. That saved your soul. You don't have to go to hell. But the Bible does say that people do go to hell. And the, those that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, that's where they go. He said, I didn't come to condemn. You was condemned already. Why? Because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. That's why you're condemned. Right. He didn't come to condemn. He came to seek and to save that Amen. which was lost. He Amen. come to give you eternal life. He Amen. come to take you back to heaven again. He came to give you eternal life. That's what he wants to do. But the Bible said over there that he, that he didn't come to condemn. He's condemned already. Why? Because you did not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's the condemnation. I mean that man is in their sin and wants to stay in their sin and don't want the light of the world, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, to shine into their darkened soul and show them who they are. Amen. They don't want to admit who they are. He said, but if you'll come and reason this thing out with me. He said, hey, I want to help you. He said, if you be willing and obedient, in verse number 19, and that's really where it's at. If you be willing and obedient, if you'll come to me, and you'll let me do for you what I want to do for you this Amen. morning. Hey, he said right here, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. Amen. And what land is that? That's beautiful land. That's heaven. Amen. That's where I'm ahead. As a matter of fact, that's where I'm already seated. The Bible said I'm already seated in heavenly places in Amen. Christ Jesus. Why? Because of something I've done? No, it's nothing that I've ever done. It's Amen. what He's already done. What He's Amen. done for me, it's all about Him. The Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm Amen. already seated. Amen. I'm already seated there. Amen. I mean, I'm heaven bound. I couldn't go to hell if I wanted to. I couldn't go to hell if the devil wanted me to. I couldn't go to hell if you wanted me to. I'm so saved I could never get lost because Jesus done something for me. I couldn't do it for myself. You'd be willing and obedient. Hey, he said right here in verse number 20, but if you refuse and rebel, if you refuse and you rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If you refuse his invitation this morning, yeah. mm -hmm. you be, as the scripture says here, rebellious and you refuse his invitation, you shall be devoured with the sword. For one day you'll stand before a holy God. For one day you'll stand before a holy God and right. he'll look at you. And you'll stand before him in your unrighteousness. And he'll look at you and he'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Amen. Amen. If you stand before Him, say, born again and washed in the blood, you stand before Him in the Son of God's righteousness, He'll say, that's my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, go ahead and enter on Him. Amen. Because that's what He's pleased with is His Son. Amen. He's not pleased with anything that you've ever done or anything you'll ever do. He's pleased with the finished work of Calvary's cross and what His darling Son does. Amen. That's always His report of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. He's never displeased with his darling son. Amen. But yet his only begotten son that he's very well pleased with as it was sung in that song that my wife sang. He hung on a cross and I say this before, I say it again. He died a God forsaken sinner for you and I. I mean, that's the, that's the son that the father was well pleased with. But at that moment, he didn't see his son anymore. He saw your sin and my Amen. sin in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, oh, Lord God, I can't look at that. I've got to turn my back on that. And Jesus died a God-forsaken sinner. And he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And Jesus died there all alone for you and me. Amen. And all he wants you to do now is just come. Come now, let us reason together. Yeah. Receive.
receive what I've done for you that it might help you and it might save you and you might be born again. Come now and let us reason together. He wants you to come for cleansing. If you turn in your Bibles now to the book of Matthew in chapter number 11. There are several invitations to the Word of God where the Lord Jesus Christ says come. Matthew chapter number 11. I'd like to begin and read in verse number 28. Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 28 over in Isaiah. He wanted you to come for cleansing. He wants to save you. In Matthew chapter number 11. Let's look at verse number 28. The Son of God speaking here again. And he said, come unto me. I mean, the Lord wants you to come to Him. And I mean, there's no better place to come to, but to the Lord. I mean, where else are you going to go? What else you got? I mean, you got the very best place to go. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus here Himself is saying, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Amen. He said, I will give you rest. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Amen. And Isaiah, like I mentioned, he wanted you to come for cleansing. For salvation to be saved. Matthew chapter number 11, he wants you to come for rest. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, this is an age and a day of people that I've never seen like ever before. You're needing rest. Amen. The world's done gone crazy. It's Amen. done gone, gone nuts. Amen. It's moving way too fast. Yeah. I don't believe the Lord ever meant for the world to move this fast. Yeah. Technology and things, and I mean so much to distract the mind and to uh, get your yeah. attention off of uh, uh, where you're headed in your eternity and things like Amen. this. Kind of like the rich man that eventually lifted his eyes up in hell because he didn't consider his eternity and things yeah. like that. I kind of believe we live in a day, I mean, where things are moving way too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Way too fast. Yeah. Yeah. And people's not considering their eternity. Yeah. But what's it doing? It's burning them out. Yeah. Yeah. It's burning them out where they just don't care. Yeah. I mean, Lord God, I mean, I just don't care because it's just too much, too fast. And oh Lord, I just need to rest. Hey, there's one that wants you to come to Him this morning and you can find true rest in Him. His name is yeah, the Lord yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. He wants you to come to Him. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Are you laboring? Are you heavy laden? Are you burned out? Are you tired? You carrying a bunch of burdens around? The Apostle Peter said over 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8, it said, casting all your care Amen. upon him. Why? For he cares for you. Amen. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said, cast your care on him because he cares for you. you got someone this morning that cares about what you're going Amen. through. That cares about how tired you are. Cares about how burned out you are. Cares about your situation and what you're going through. And he loves you so good and he knows your situation yeah. better than you know your family. Amen. He knows how to help you. Amen. Amen. Just cast your care upon him. Amen. The psalmist said, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. You know what we'll do? We'll carry our burdens around. We will. Yeah. We think we got to carry them all around. But all we got to do is come in prayer. How is all this? How is all this stuff accomplished? How, how do you come to the Lord, the one that wants to reason with you and reason about your soul? How do you come to the one and find rest that wants to uh, give you rest to your soul? You just give it over to Him in prayer. That's how you communicate to Him. You just go ahead in prayer. I mean, just go ahead and have a little talk with Jesus. I mean, just go ahead and tell Him all about it. And by faith, just go ahead in your heart. Just go ahead and do that thing that He's wanting you to do. He's wanting to help you this morning. Amen. He's not wanting to hurt you. He wants to help you. Because He loves you. Amen. The Lord loves you. I was, I was there in our room just looking at these scriptures uh, uh, yesterday in the evening. And I was looking over these scriptures. And I was thinking about the different folks that I might be preaching to today. Thinking about myself and different ones overseas and things like that. I was thinking about how much Jesus loves you. You realize that this morning how much Amen. Jesus yeah. loves you. Amen. I mean, this is a God of you or waiting for you to mess up or we got some big stick and he wants to beat you over the head because he's the big authority. No, I'm preaching about a kind, tender shepherd that wants to lead his sheep around and wants to love them and be good to him because Amen. he's just God and that's who he is. Amen. The Lord loves you. God is love. I mean, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He wants to supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He wants to help you this morning. Amen. He wants to save your soul. 
He wants you to cast your care upon him. He wants to take your burdens. He wants you to just go ahead and be happy and thrive and go ahead and sing it. a joyful noise and make a joyful noise unto his holy place today. He wants to help you this morning. Man. Amen. He wants to see you be successful. He wants to see you thrive. He loves you this morning. Amen. He's a great big God of love. That's who he is this morning. Amen. He wants to help you. He said, come now, let us reason together. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I want to give you rest. I want to help you. What you going through? What's your situation? The Lord knows all about it. He said, give it to me. Go ahead and give it to me. Don't try to carry that thing yourself. Don't try to carry it yourself. It's too big for you. It'll defeat you. It'll wear you down. It'll beat you down. You can't carry it. Amen. It's too big for you. It's too big for you. Amen. It's too big for me. There's a great big God in heaven Amen. that can carry your burdens. Amen. He can carry whatever it is you're going through if you just go ahead and give them to him. If you just go ahead and give Amen. Because he loves you. He wants to help you. He wants to be good to you. Come now. Let us reason together. Come now. Come unto me. All you that labor heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. To take my yoke upon you. Let's trade places again. Let's trade places again. Just like I've done on the cross. I traded places with you. Amen. I took your sin. I became your sin. And you became my righteousness. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and take my yoke for a little while. Why don't I take your heavy yoke and I'll bear it for you. Amen. Just take this easy light yoke. And go ahead and I'll bear it for you. Because I love you. And I want to be good to you. Take my yoke upon you. He said right here. And learn of me. <laughs> I always think about it when I read that verse right there. There's two women over there in that one scene where Jesus was there. One's name was Martha. One's name was Mary. Martha's around doing what most of us do. Yeah. Yeah. Doing what we think God wants us to do. Doing what we think is important. Yeah. Doing what we think. See, that's the problem, what we think. That's right. Amen. She got rebuked. Martha got rebuked. The one that was slain and sitting at his feet, yeah. doing absolutely positively nothing, mm -hmm. according to the world, yeah. was sitting at the Lord's feet here in his word. Yeah. And she's yeah. the one that got admonished and said, you ought to be like her. Amen. The Lord said, come and learn of me. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, why? For I'm meek yeah. and lowly in heart. I mean, people that get burned out, they get, they get to where they just don't care. That's not a good servant anyway. You'll get one of the parts where you just go. Because you can't care. Because you're doing it on your own. Yeah. But you can learn of the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll learn that he's meek and lowly. And all those weights get off you. And you get revived and everything. He said, you shall find rest unto your souls. He said, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So you say, come to me. I want to cleanse you. I want to reason with you. Come to me. I want to give you rest. I want to take your burdens. I want to take your heavy things. Why? Because I care about you. If you turn to the book of Hebrews in chapter number 4. Hebrews in chapter number 4. Begin reading in verse number 14 of Hebrews in chapter number 4. It says over here, seeing them. And I like these scriptures right here. I really do. It says, seeing them. <laughs> that we have a great high priest. I mean, he's the greatest and the highest. I mean, he's just the best. It seems that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. It's the only high priest I've ever read about that was able to pass up into the heavens. And furthermore, this, this thought here just humbles me and blows my mind and makes me want to say, Lord, be to the Lamb of God. Well, yeah. what great things he, uh, He's done for yeah. me. Bless the yeah. Lord, oh my soul, and all that is with yeah. me. Bless His yeah. holy name. He's yeah. the only high priest I ever read about that was also the sacrifice. Yeah. Because He's the only one worthy. We have a great high priest. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. And that's who He is. I'll say it again. Jesus, the Son of God. That's who He is. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. I mean, we got someone we can trust in. We got someone we can go ahead and take it to the bank and count on it. And His name's the Lord Jesus Christ. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. We got one, I mean, Lord God, He bore it all. He bore our shame. I mean, He yeah. hung there naked before the, I mean, the whole entire yeah. world between the heavens and the earth. It was made your sin. Yeah. I mean, He loves us this morning. He's a great high priest and He's touched the field of our infirmities. 
It says, but we've been all points tempted like as we are, yes, without sin. Yeah. Without sin. He said, let us therefore. He said, now that I've told you all about that, now that I've told you who he is and how wonderful he is and how much he loves you and cares about your situation and don't get tired of hearing from you, wants to hear from you, longs to hear from you, wants you to bring your problems to him because he wants to help you. And the Apostle Paul said, let us therefore come boldly. Amen. We can come boldly. Why? Say, come boldly under the throne of grace. We can approach the throne of grace with boldness. Amen. Not with a proud, arrogant boldness. Amen. No, with a confidence of what He's done for us and that we're accepted. No, not because of what we've done, but because of what the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ has done. We can come in because we know we belong and we can approach it because Amen. we know He's going to help us. Let us come boldly, it says, to the throne of grace. When I read that word grace in the word of God, I mean, the Lord gave me this a while back. I've heard grace is God giving to you something you don't deserve. And I like that uh, the, the definition of the word grace. But God give me something else about that word grace. Whenever I read that word grace in the Bible, I see people getting help. Amen. That word grace in my mind is interchangeable with the word hell. What is it that you need this morning? God's got enough grace for you. Amen. He's got more grace than you got sin. He's Amen. bigger than your problems. And He wants to help you this Amen. morning. He said, come Amen. to my throne. He said, you can approach my throne. Because by some made it possible, His blood is on Amen. the mercy seat. There it is. Come on Amen. in. Amen. I mean, I believe that's the way a father should be. He should be approachable. Amen. He should be approachable. Amen. A father should be respected for who he is. Yeah. But Amen. at the same time, he should be approachable. Amen. If a father's not approachable, there's something wrong. Yeah. He's too full of pride. Yeah. He's too arrogant. Amen. I mean, he's not approachable. Right. But the heavenly father, he's approachable. Yeah. He's approachable. Yeah. He said, matter of fact, so approachable, he said, you can go ahead and come boldly. You can come on in because you belong here. You're accepted. I want you in here. Let's come in. I'm in here and talk yeah. it all over. Yeah. Let us therefore come boldly. Under the throne of grace. I mean, isn't that a wonderful thought? I mean, that's contrary to what I've heard preached a lot of places. I mean, our God sits on the throne of grace. Yeah. That's who He is. He wants to show you mercy. He wants to show you love. He wants to do something for you. He wants to help you. All you got to do is come. Amen. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Why? That you may obtain. He wants you to get something. He wants you to obtain something. He wants you to leave a lot different than what you came. He wants you to leave helped. The Bible said he's a very present help in time of need. He said, let us therefore come boldly. You like how it says right here, let us? I mean, it's a whosoever will may come. Hey. Well, it's not just for this select group or that select group. All the Gentile dogs can just come on in. It's because yeah. Jesus died on the cross for all. Yeah. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne yeah. of grace. Amen. He said that we may obtain yeah. mercy. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, mercy. Yeah. I mean, if he's going on into the king's throne room knowing that he's going to pass judgment on you, I don't guess you'd want to go on in. But if you're going on into the king's throne room knowing that you're going to find grace and mercy and he's going to love you and smile at you and tell you all kinds of nice things and I mean you're going to go on out of hell, I mean you're going to want to come on in. Amen. Sitting Amen. on the throne of grace. Yeah. Want to show you some mercy. Want to love you. I mean that's a good God. Amen. It's in fine grace to help in time of need. Amen. I guarantee you you're in time of need right now. Amen. I'll guarantee you that everybody in this place this morning is in some kind of need of some kind of help from a holy God Amen. that has the answer. So just come boldly. Come on in. Come now and let us reason together. Come, come unto me, all ye that labor. Come on in. He said right here, let us therefore come boldly. Come on in to my throne room. Let's talk it all over. Let's talk it all over. I never wanted to read it before because all I heard was about the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast, the mark of the beast, and all that mess. It's in there. But read the first scripture when you get some time. It said the revelation of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden I wanted to read it because it was about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It said in Revelation in chapter number 22. Let's look at verse number 17. The Bible says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. See, the Lord wants you to come. His Bride wants you to come. I want you to come. Why do they want you to come? Because they know that you're going to get help. It said, And let him, not someone else, Say, but let him, and I mean that's the one that heareth here, and I mean you're hearing, just say, come. I mean, you've heard about this Jesus. Just tell people to go ahead. Come on in. Yes. Go ahead and get to him. Say, and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Now, there's three times the, that verse mentions that word that I'm preaching on this morning, come. I believe there's one there for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. There's yes. three of them there. And they said, come. Come why? Because if you're thirsty this morning, you need a drink of water, I want you to come. Hey. This preacher wants you to come. Mm -hmm. This preacher loves you. And if this preacher wants you to come, and this preacher loves you, how much more a holy God? Hey. And he said, come. Come. Whether it's for cleansing, whether it's for rest, I mean, or whether it's for some kind of help that you might need, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. Amen. It's up to you this morning. Help's here. Salvation's here. Help is here. Rest is here. But it's up to you. Come. You've got to come. And that's what the Word of God was trying to tell you here. All these invitations through the Word of God to come. It's not a God telling you to go, get away, get out of my sight. No, come. Come. Just as you like the song we sing, just as I am. He wants you just to come. Amen. Because He wants to help you. Because he loves you. And he wants you to leave helped. And in a better place than what you came. Amen. 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 Amen.